So good morning, everyone. Glad you all made it. So today we're going to talk about Wikipedia, Wikimedia chapters. And um, well, you, we, will, we will first try to, um, it says Wikipedia chapters, why? Yeah. <laughs> Even Wikipedians make this mistake, it's horrible. We're just so, such a horrible people. So we're actually going to talk about Wikimedia chapters. Um, first we will just introduce you what it is, but we're not going to talk for like 18 minutes about what bylaws look like and <laughs> what procedures we do and how you can elect a board and all, all that kind of stuff. If you want to know more about that, you can come to me in the break and I will explain it all to you. But right now I think uh, it's much more important to talk about um, to talk about the cool projects that are being done by the Wikimedia chapters. To explain to you what Wikimedia chapters are by just showing, them, showing you what they are doing. Um, the goal of this presentation is not so much to um, yeah, not so much to, to, to give you a full overview of every single thing that people are doing, although you might feel that way at the end of the presentation, um, but it's just to give you an inspiration. We're not going very much in depth. We will have time for questions at the end, but we will just give you an overview of what are some of the really nice projects that, or in our opinion, uh, of the Wikimedia chapters. Okay, first, being a lawyer, I like disclaimers. Oh. As uh, Ludovic mentioned, this is not a list of all the projects, not even a list of half of them. Uh, we are not doing all the chapters. Uh, we are only doing the, the chapters that were uh, only doing chapters projects that were considered cool, and not by us. We asked the chapters to give a list of their own cool projects, which were they believe to be the coolest, and we asked the chapters about other chapters project to give a list of the cool projects done by other chapters. And then we chose the one that we thought coolest of that list. And one of the criteria for a project to be cool is low budget. We believe that the, I believe, Ludovic believes that the best project can be done on very low budget. Uh, that, that, that does not mean no money. It means that low budget from the chapter and sponsors usually come in and help. Um, and this is to inspire you, to show you that things can be done even if you don't have the money to do it. So, um, first of all, what are chapters? Well, let, let, let's just give a little bit of background. Um, who of you here has been at this presentation last year in Haifa? Can I see some hands? Okay, so it's definitely helpful if I then explain to you a little bit. Who knows what a chapter is? That's about 75, 80%. That's, that's actually pretty good. And who is a member of a chapter? That's also a lot. That's wow. the same percentage. I think last year that percentage was much lower. Um, so, sooner or later you will be a member then. Um, so what chapters are independent associations um, that support, promote, empower, engage, create uh, the stuff that will help us with our mission to bring um, the sum of all human knowledge to every single person on the planet, uh, the mission that you know from the foundation as well. Chapters are working towards the same goals, but mostly within their specified geographic reason, region or from that region uh, in other uh, countries as well. Now, in, in Frankfurt, Wikimania Frankfurt, that's 2005, this is what Chapter World looked like. We had a few blue bulbs in Europe, and, and this morning, Dior told me, he was, he was panicked because there was a little bulb in, in South America, that is France. <laughs> <laughs> they, have a small, they have a small backyard there, and uh, that, that's, also, that's why that is blue, it's not uh, another country. And a, a year later, you see that it's slowly expanding towards the east. Um, uh, some more countries have been joining. To the south, Italy joined as well. And when we, uh, we were at Wikimania in Taipei, you see, well, Taiwan became a chapter. Uh, and even some more countries in Europe uh, were turning blue. And uh, in Alexandria, we were uh, entering South America, really now, uh, with Wikimedia Argentina. And you see that also Israel uh, has turned blue and slowly we started to conquer Scandinavia. 
Well, next year you see that suddenly the whole world turns blue because Russia, Indonesia, and Australia joined as well. Big areas, of course, in this map because they're on the north and the south. Um, and also Scandinavia um, is, is getting more and more engaged. And once you go to, once we, once we were in Poland, you see that more and more countries were joining. And once, last year in Haifa, we actually had a whole sprint with a whole bunch of extra countries, uh, some of them small, some of them bigger, um, which uh, joined as well. And this year, I'm very happy to see that this country even, uh, that this map turned even more blue. Two of the chapters have been recognized, have not yet been founded, Kenya and Bangladesh. Um, so I think this will look even better next year with a whole bunch of chapters that are right now in the recognition phase uh, within the chapters committee. Um, what we did, I mentioned it briefly before, we sent an email to the chapter asking them three questions. First of all, what have you been up to this year? We are talking not about calendar year, but about uh, Wikimedia year. This is from the opening uh, uh, talk of one Wikimania to the opening talk of the next Wikimania. So what have you been up to since August 4th in uh, last year in Haifa and up to this day? We asked them what is the coolest project done by another chapter. This is to see what got uh, recognition by other chapters. Um, this is also to see how much chapters were able to broadcast what they were doing. Because if a chapter did great work and nobody else heard about it, it would not be considered a cool project by other chapters. This should be maybe a lesson to the chapters to broadcast what they are doing more, to share more information and to give ideas to other chapters. And the last question we ask each chapter is what were the three coolest projects by, by, done by that chapter? Um, and we hope they chose the interesting ones. Um, so, especially from, uh, we also, we, when we asked them what projects did you do last year, we just gave them a few categories and I think it's interesting to see which chapters actually participated in that. Um, for a lot of reasons, um, Editor Meetup is one of the projects that is being done by most of the chapters. By the way, if people want, who are having an Editor Meetup in the back of the room right now, you can also take a seat, don't worry. Um, Perhaps Editor Meetups is one of the main reasons why chapters are created in the first place. People who are in a certain region need help to do the meetups, and a chapter is one of the tools to do it, a legal tool. You want to hire a room, hire a catering, you need a legal body to do that. So this is the first reason to create a chapter, Editor's Meetup. But then the chapters evolve and expand and start doing some additional work, mostly outreach work. So outreach uh, has been done by quite a lot of chapters. Outreach is primarily going to other organizations going to the press and explaining them what is Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and our uh, mission all about. What is free knowledge and why are we caring about that? Um, and a lot, of a lot of chapters, as you can see, also did some kind of an editing event um, that, or a contest uh, where they actually, um, they actively invited people to participate in editing Wikipedia during an event or during a contest. They gave prizes sometimes. Sometimes they just locked five people in a room and threw away the key. And sometimes uh, they had a more extensive uh, kind of contest. And uh, we will definitely see uh, several of those. Um, a lot of the chapters also did a conference of one, of co one kind of an, or another, uh, which probably uh, explains itself. Uh, a, meet, a, a large meeting of a lot of people uh, usually one or even multiple days, and uh, it's very helpful to have a chapter for that. Okay, as I mentioned, meetups is one of the main reasons to do uh, to create a chapter. We are going to go over some of the meetups that the chapters themselves thought were interesting, and that we thought that were interesting. No, excuse me. Um, we are again not showing all the chapters meetups, and we are basically doing it by order of. Uh, how people submitted the, the, their answers. So it doesn't mean that one meetup is more important than the other one. Uh, the first one, you should, if you are sometimes in pictures, you can try and recognize yourselves. This was done uh, by the uh, New York chapter, the great American Wiknik. Uh, this is a picnic. Um, we asked each chapter to give tips to other chapters how to do their work, and these are really nice tips. A picnic is a really easy thing to organize. 
it is inviting, people want to come and eat, food is always good, and it's inviting Wikipedians and non-Wikipedians, and this is a, a great way to enlarge the community and, and reach it by uh, Wikipedians to be, by future participants who come and see that the people behind Wikipedia are not that scary, usually. Um, what was nice about the Wikinic that it was done in many cities around the United States, 16 uh, cities in 2011, in June, and it's going to be done again this year. There are expected to be 20 cities. It wasn't necessarily on the same day. There were several events, but altogether it's a really nice event that can be organized with very low budget and is a great way to bring new editors. Um, a little bit more complicated and a bigger event Actually, the biggest uh, Wikimeet that was held uh, the past year, it was almost as big as Wikimania, uh, by a few people short. Um, there were 700 attendees. This is the conference of uh, Wikimedia India, done November 2011 in Mumbai. Uh, it was the first conference, the first major conference in the national level in India, uh, which is a really high uh, way of achieving such a conference when you're doing something the first time and making it so successful. I mentioned 700 attendees, that's quite a lot. It's, uh, today I understand we have uh, 1,100, 1,200 attendees. That's the biggest conference ever, but having a national conference that's almost as big as Wikimania, it's quite an achievement. Um, mostly it involved national, local speakers, but they did have some international speakers who came and they plan to do it annually, which is a great uh, goal to, to do. Um, another meetup, a little bit smaller, but still fun, was the Wiki Camp in Hungary, which was a four-day event. This is also something very complicated to do. Um, it's like a mini Wikimania. It in included many fun activities, uh, tours of cities in Hungary, a barbecue, wine tasting, I guess there's not such an age limit in Hungary. If you can have wine tasting for Wikipedians, as other countries should learn from that. <laughs> and of course, it included presentations. You do notice that we have the links at the bottom of each page where you can see information about each project, usually in local language, so Google Translate helps. Um, but you can take ideas from that. Um, this is another fun project that was done, another fun meetup. Of course, the, the slides will become available on Wikimedia Commons, so don't bother typing over that link. You can click on it later. I see some people getting really scary about writing it down. Um, I think one of the really, really cool collaboration projects um, in the Wikimedia world is uh, the Ibirocov meeting. Uh, last year, it was organized for the first time in Argentina, where a bunch of chapters and non-chapter groups came together and tried to uh, try to talk about all kinds of topics that were really important to them. This year, in uh, the beginning of June, 13 countries uh, sent their delegates uh, from the Spanish and Portuguese and Italian-speaking countries um, to all the way to Chile. And uh, they talked about uh, the topics that, were, uh, they, that they were caring about. Uh, for example, they had a small workshop about Wikilas Monuments, one of the projects we will talk about later as well. Um, and around five countries uh, out of that group are definitely joining uh, the Wiki Lost Monuments contest, uh, partially because of that. Um, also, the, they were having a discussion about indigenous communities, a uh, workshop about grant making process, they had a workshop about social media, and um, apparently they didn't have a presentation on Wikimania. That's really sad. But I, I was promised that when they next conquered year. Hong Kong next year, next year and they will speak Spanish there, they will come and have a presentation. Yeah, that was the last year. year. So we didn't want to uh, take, take, some, take time for other groups. OK. Um, so one of the tips they had for other groups that might want to try to organize something similar is to definitely always because it's so, such a big conference and it's always very hard to plan everything ahead, it's always important to add some excess budget. Um, it might sound very, sound very obvious, but I've seen plenty of chapter budgets uh, flying around organizing um, projects um, where they didn't have anything for the unexpected. So I think that's very helpful, um, a very helpful tip uh, that can be used in almost every circumstance.
Um, the next project was in Poland, and it was about the 10th and a I don't think it's, we should talk about all five of other projects that we can cope with the background all the time. <laughs> How interesting they may be. Yes, we're, the, we're back. So the 10th anniversary of the Polish Wikipedia. You may have heard last year about a lot of uh, press attention uh, in January 2011 about the 10th anniversary of Wikipedia. Not every language edition was founded immediately in that first month. Most, actually, most of them were founded later in the year. So the Polish Wikipedia had their celebration a bit later, but definitely, definitely not less interesting. They had a big, very, the, it was the largest uh, meeting organized by Wikimedia Polska um, up so far. And they had more than 280 participants uh, from multiple countries, as you can see. And it was a combination of a lecture uh, and showing films. One of the films was Thank You Wikipedia, where they invited a lot of famous Polish people to say something nice to the editors of Wikipedia. I'm sure that if you find a Polish person in the audience at some point, they will be happy to show you uh, some shots from that. Um, I think uh, one of their big tips was be bold about approaching celebrities. Don't be afraid. They do know what Wikipedia is, and they might actually want to help you if you can use their help. It might not help in every single project, but who knows? Don't be afraid of it. Um, the next one was the Glam Camp in Amsterdam. Uh, organized in the Netherlands in December 2011. It was uh, a follow-up, a second meeting after the first one in New York uh, in May 2011, and it was a three-day unconference um, with about 60 attendees, uh, four tracks, uh, which meant that there were a lot of different sessions trying to get something accomplished in a three-day weekend. Um, it, I think it was very helpful, uh, but it was not just work, it was also a lot of fun and I see some people smiling now, um, with backstage tours in uh, museums, um, and I think the sleeping in hotels was appreciated more by some than by others. Yeah, well, just to comment, what Ludwig considers is fun is cycling in the rain to get to the conference. Some people consider it more fun than others. <laughs> we had a very Dutch experience. And of course, there's Wikimania. That's the annual biggest event of the Wikimedia movement. It is, well, it's, it's in the presentation because it's done every year. It's done by global rotation. It is, we try to do it in a different continent every year and a bit continent a bit further from the previous one. Um, so it is, it's a unique uh, experience uh, for the attendees and for those who prepare it. We, Try to mention it in the, this is not a low budget project, so it definitely shouldn't be in this presentation. It's usually a humongous budget project. It is exhausting to prepare. Well, as you can see, there are multiple tracks. This year, I believe there are seven tracks at one point. Um, many side conferences. We had two or three side conferences yesterday and the day before. Um, it is unique, it is not like nothing else, but this is supposed to be an uh, inspirational uh, presentation. And the goal is to inspire those chapters to do picnics, but also to aim high, and maybe someday want to do Wikimania. We do have a word of warning. I told you I like disclaimers. Um, it tends to cause some frictions between the people who prepare it, um, which may result in something like this. And this is a stage pictures, but sometimes stage, pic stage pictures may appear really real. <laughs> So this is a word of warning, it happens every year. Um, okay, now to other projects, smaller projects with smaller budget, which are more fun. This is somewhere between uh, meetings and outreach, because it has an outcome, which is a glam outcome. We have photos being uploaded to Commons, 
three photos, which one of the goals is of the founder of the Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement to create free contents. But it's also meetups. People meet up and have fun while taking the pictures. So several nice example. Uh, Wikimedia Hungary does a weekly or bi-weekly tour in different areas of Budapest and take pictures and uploaded quite a lot of them to comments and these are really nice pictures from what I've seen of many places in Hungary. Um, one of the earliest uh, photo hunting groups is the one done in Israel. You can see from the view. Um, the LF Milim project. Uh, so far we had 46 guided tours over a period of uh, five years. The tours are monthly. There are about 30 participants in each tours. Um, the tours are done around the country, so it's not the same 30 people coming, but if you're doing a tour in a certain area, you have 15, 20 people coming to that area, and there is some overlap between the areas. In a total, you can say that over 60 people participated in the tours over the years, and it, it expands. Every tour, you have more and more people. Um, you usually have about 300 free images uploaded per tour, and I'm giving a lecture about it tomorrow afternoon in the last session, so come and hear all the tips then. It's in, uh, in this room tomorrow at three o'clock. Three o'clock and 10 minutes. Uh, okay, contests. One of the ways to get picture to, up, uh, to get people to upload pictures, usually people are quite lazy about it, even they, if they do go to the tours, not necessarily they upload the pictures, is to have a contest. If you give people prizes, they will upload more pictures, hoping to get the prize. So three of examples of these, this is one of the nicer examples, as you can see, is in a car hiding from the rain. There is a reason for this. This is Wikipedia Takes Montreal, which was done in Canada in August 2011. I'm going to start with the end. It was a successful event. Many pictures were uploaded, and they're doing it again in Quebec. The, the award, by the way, here was a camera, which is quite a nice award for picture up, uh, people uploading pictures. Uh, we had the, they had the 112 people competing in the competition. They divided into 59 teams took pictures of about 400 uh, uh, monuments and buildings, quite a lot of uh, gigabytes uploaded, and the most interesting part, they were doing it while there was a hurricane in Montreal. That's why it's in the car. And again, uh, tomorrow in this hall at 3, uh, 3, uh, 3.10, there will be a presentation about it by Benoit, explaining how they battled the hurricane. And I do wonder if they're going to do it again in Quebec, will they bring the hurricane there as well? Um, Another similar uh, competition was done without the hurricane, was done in Estonia. It is the Estonian Science Photo of the Year competition. It is a bit different. It is not about monuments and buildings, but rather a topical contest. The pictures has to be of a uh, scientific subject. But there were 281 submissions, and there were big prizes. I'm not sure what they are. If there is somebody from Estonia here at the end, they can tell us what the prizes were. OK, now for the biggest competition. Ludovic? Yeah, we will definitely talk more about this in a later presentation, but um, this, is, this is a project that has been going on since 2010. Uh, Wikilas Monuments uh, started in the Netherlands as a contest. Well, like, yeah, well, actually, there are a lot of people like monuments. Let's just try it out. It's a crazy idea. If we get a few thousand pictures, that's wonderful. In uh, 2010, we got 12,000 pictures in the end, and we were a bit flabbergasted. So were the other countries, and they tried to join. They said, well, France said, like, yeah, let's do it, and let's get crazy. Um, and in the end, 18 countries participated in uh, the international contest last year, um, with more than 5,000 participating photographers. Um, we had more than 160, well, we had 168,208 submissions. We have a very precise number now. Um, and we submitted that actually for the Guinness Book of World Records uh, as the largest photography contest ever in the world. Um, you can definitely hear more about this uh, in a panel, uh, the pa which will be later. This the sorry, the panel is tomorrow, tomorrow at this room, right after lunch. This is the, the, these are the countries that were participating last year, but it's not, it's not over yet. There will be another contest this year, in uh, 2012, in September again. <laughs> and as you can see from the map, the number of countries is a bit scary. 
Uh, there are there are between the 30 and the 40 participating countries this year, most likely, and um, as you can see, it's it, it covers a lot, a big part of the world. I think there are still a few countries that are not updated yet, but most of them are uh, really interested, and uh, I think it's really wonderful to have a photo contest all the way from Argentina to Russia, uh, from South, it's including almost every continent uh, except Australia. And the and Antarctica. Yes, I know it's a Wikipedia meeting. We have to include that continent at some point. I think Philippe has some context there. He's not here. Uh, we should have known that before. So apparently we do have a Wikipedia in, South, in Antarctica, so we are gonna get in touch with that. <laughs> Let's fix it. So just as a few examples um, of these countries, because this is not really one project. It's actually, for every, diff every country is a different contest. Every country, there's a bunch of volunteers working really, really hard to get it off the ground. And um, it, it, it's going all over the place. Um, in a country like uh, South Africa, they're actively collaborating with the government and even considering to, uh, to make this a theme of their national holiday in September. Um, in, uh, in the United States, they're trying to have as many cities as possible participating in this and try to get a really broad uh, project out of this uh, with uh, just like the WICNIC, basically, uh, with a lot of local events going on. Um, so I think in some countries it's really the first time that there's actually a national list of monuments being created. Um, like I think even in Germany there is not a national monument list yet. But in Israel they're uh, actually the first uh, time that someone asked about that and uh, the government uh, suddenly realized they didn't have it. So now they're building it uh, together with Wikimedia. So you can definitely find more uh, information on that and indeed tomorrow 10 past 1 in this room. Um, we have uh, also, it, it doesn't always have to be online. Uh, projects can also sometimes take, take a different component. Um, and sometimes it's actually going back to the paper. Like uh, this, uh, this project from uh, Sweden, the Kulturskatter uh, for Nate. I probably pronounced it wrong, but it's a good try. Um, it's, it's about cultural treasures and uh, it's all about the, the collaborations with the galleries, libraries, museums and archives, uh, the Klma, um, which is, uh, has been published in June uh, this year. It's actually very recent. If you see Leonard, uh, definitely uh, talk with him about it. I'm sure he appreciates some feedback on it. Um, and it's a small booklet about how to put cultural treasures online. It's aimed at the uh, cultural institutions and it walks you through the issues like copyright, licenses, why you should do it, why you should not do it, when should you, when should you not collaborate. Things we always have to explain every time we go to a cultural institution. Um, unfortunately, it's only in Swedish available, but I'm pretty sure if, if you show a lot of interest, it's also coming, becoming available in English. Another uh, book that has been uh, published was the Alles über Wikipedia uh, by Wikimedia Deutschland, everything about Wikipedia and the people behind it. So it's not just an art, it's not just a book about how Wikipedia works, it's also really going into interviews, into anecdotes on how, what, what are these people, who are those crazy folks that are writing all this content? Um, it gives some historical background, and uh, more than 100 Wikipedians have been collaborating in writing this uh, book of uh, 300 pages. Okay, we started uh, with uh, meetups and uh, somehow outreach snuck in, and none of you noticed by the time letting Ludwig say all the projects with the difficult names. Um, one of the first things done about outreach, we were thinking about outreach or to get people to write on Wikipedia, which is an online project. But in many areas, you cannot get online. It was discussed in Jimmy's lecture 
There are two offline projects. Uh, we don't have pictures for them because they are offline projects. But uh, one of two, we chose two interesting ones. One of them done by Bangladesh in the uh, San, San, Santili language, Santili Wikipedia. There are uh, 6.2 million native speakers. Most of them are in India, not in Bangladesh. Their script, the script they are using is non-Latin, and apparently they have problems reaching internet, writing in this Wikipedia online. The project is having the articles written on paper and then typed and uploaded by volunteers. A very similar project is done in Kenya, where uh, many, most of the population does not have access to the internet. And again, people are typing or writing the articles in text-only version. They are using the English and the Swahili Wikipedia um, and people are just adding, amending articles, bringing it to the volunteers who then uh, amend the articles online. The tips they were uh, giving us is that sometimes you need a safe place where people can be with their computer and do the uploading, and they suggest to do it in university campuses. Um, we invite you to a workshop about offline projects, which will be done by Manuel Schneider at Saturday at 12.10 in room 307, uh, which is about this subject. Um, this uh, the uh, project, the offline projects, is important for languages which uh, have in smaller language Wikipedia, and this comes to another uh, goal of the Wikipedia movement, which is a cultural and language preser preservation. Uh, Wikipedia can be used to uh, prevent the loss of very small languages and to assist them to remain in, uh, not to become ex extinct. Um, two projects, one was done by uh, Wikimedia Poland, the Bila Movice, I told Ludovic to do all the difficult names, but this is on his mind. This was done this summer, the past couple of months, in a, it's a small village. In this language, uh, there were only 70 native speakers, and they are uh, very elderly, which means that this language will be lost in a couple of years, if not preserved by, uh, by somebody, and the Wikimedia movement can do this, and I think it is great work done by Wikimedia Poland. They are creating a wiktionary, an audio recording of that language. They are going to the village, interviewing the elders who live there and trying to save this language from being forgotten. Uh, another similar project is done by Portugal. Uh, this is in the Mirandes language. It is spoken in a small area in the north of Portugal. Um, there are 15,000 native speakers. It is not an extinct language, but it is a small one. And the project is an outreach to try to have these native speakers become Wikipedia editor. It is done with the local cultural association. So if the, the Mirandes uh, Wikipedia has, is very small, it's less than a thousand articles. So if you have a small group of speakers, it's not too small, it is a good way to, collect, to do this work is to find, usually they have a local group to try to present the language, to outreach, contact this group and convince them to do it online through Wikipedia thus allowing the Wikipedia and like that language to grow, and the goal of all projects is achieved. Um, education, that's part of that. Um, okay. um, so besides collaborating with uh, cultural institutions, there are a lot of chapters that have independently started to work with educational institutions, high schools, universities, colleges. Um, I'm not sure if anyone tried to collaborate with kindergartens, um, and one of them is uh, this project from Italy, Adotta una parola va a scuola, scuola, probably pronounced horribly, um, which is a contest for high school classes where groups of kids would uh, collaborate um, in a competition to write one article together. So in a lot of countries you have some kind of uh, requirement that you learn how to collaborate, how to collaborate with classmates, how to write something together. And uh, this can be, of course, very well used for this, and um, the, winner, cl the winning classes could actually get a school trip to uh, another city and, uh, well, go there together as well. I think 20, uh, 20 classes participated, and um, it's, uh, well, it's going to happen next year in a national level, which means that uh, even more classes will participate. Do you already know how many yeah, schools well, Find a nice 
balance between online and offline volunteers. Obviously, you need some people to go to the schools and explain to them how they can edit, where edit button is. But at the same time, you also need people who can do the follow-up. Once they post their article, the article should not just get deleted again, because, well, that's kind of a waste. Um, so they learn from other education projects, and um, they try to really get some people to do that follow-up and to help them to uh, get the articles uh, on Wikipedia in a way that it can actually stay there and that it can actually be used very efficiently and very effectively. Um, the other tip was um, to find one enthusiastic person in the school that can be some kind of an ambassador uh, towards the other people in the school and that can, um, that can try to motivate people so because it's impossible and unlikely that you can actually go to every single school and that you can actually try to persuade everyone all the way from the teacher to the director. Um, another, um, another education project is coming from Germany, um, which is uh, also a workshop project uh, where, uh, where Wikipedians went to schools and uh, ran a program there. More than a thousand people participated in uh, more than a hundred uh, events. And it's not just high schools, but it's uh, basically, it's, it's, it's the high school branch, it's the colleges, uh, but also uh, there's a focus on third age classes, which means that the elderly people who want to learn how to use internet can actually also learn how to use Wikipedia. Um, I think that's an interesting uh, approach, uh, which is, uh, more or less, uh, well, it's, it's a different approach from the traditional educational uh, projects. Um, it's part of, uh, so because of that, it's part of the European uh, Consortium Third Age Online, uh, where also Wikimedia Switzerland participates in. Uh, a third project is uh, the student clubs, which work, uh, which have to do some kind of work as a social service. In Mexico, uh, there is a requirement for every student before they can get their bachelor's degree to do some, to spend some hours in public service. And uh, instead of sending them to the military, they actually require them to spend some hours uh, to do something useful, uh, for example, on Wikipedia. So Wikimedia Mexico um, tried to create a program where the students could actually partic uh, participate in this by writing articles. Um, one of the tips they had to make that more effective in the future is try to really um, understand what the school is about, what their interests are, and also to, uh, to make the lists of articles that you propose to them very spe specific to them. Not every school is the same, and not every child is the same, so some of the kids may have different interests than others. And even though it might be a requirement, an obligatory uh, thing, having them motivated is, of course, a very big uh, advantage. Um, there was also a, an information visualization course uh, in Finland, which is uh, a, a totally different approach. They had to, uh, they have an existing course in uh, visualizing information. You know, when you get on Wikipedia, we have lots of nice pictures, we have lots of nice photos, but something we lack a lot is actually nice graphs, very nice expl uh, visual explanations of how things work. And they try to, to tackle this issue uh, by collaborating with the Alto University, um, by giving the students assignments to, uh, to take a piece of information and visualize that in a way that can be used on Wikipedia. One of the examples is, for example, this graph, how money creation is being explained. You can look it up on Wikipedia, and I'm sure you can see it in a much better resolution. Um, but it's definitely worth a visit. The ambassador program in the Czech Republic um, is also uh, interesting, uh, definitely. Um, it's, uh, it was a collaboration with uh, the Institute of Environmental Studies um, in Prague. And uh, during the winter, they had some 100 articles uh, created with this program, and in the summer, some 200. Um, they specifically said it would be very good as a tip to focus on the personal contact with the students. Obviously, if you're on a distant and uh, you're a teacher, uh, or not a teacher, but if you're on a distant and you're just online, 
Um, the students might not be as motivated as when you actually go there, when you talk with the students, when you sit to next to them on a, with a computer. Um, that might be a much better approach. And then in the uh, UK, there was the World War I Editathon. I'm, was this an educational, well, actually they did just did a project, it's a really cool one. Uh, an editathon in the British Library uh, where they locked up people for six hours in a room. Um, I'm not sure if they let them out for lunch. Um, but uh, the event was basically sold out. Lots of Wikipedians wanted to participate. And uh, they didn't just put Wikipedians there, but they also put some academics in there, some professors, some people who really knew their, to their stuff, their topics, and uh, could actually help the Wikipedians to find the information they were looking for. Um, what they found very helpful is to actively use the partners' networks, not just to uh, use the people that you know yourself, but also to, to uh, get in touch with the people that the people you know may know which sounds a bit too complicated, but it's really easy at publishing. Just before that, the, with regarding to the editor, they tried to do something that didn't work. They tried to have an online session in which Wikipedia, who were not at the session, contacted the expert. And it didn't work. Um, we're not sure why. The, the idea is nice. Uh, we think it should, maybe the goal should have been clearer, because you can't do editing online while an editor takes place. But maybe the connection is more difficult. And experts sitting in a room would much rather converse with somebody else sitting in that room, especially if they cannot go out, than somebody over some uh, internet connection. But it was a try. Um, now, a completely different project, still in education, was done by Israel. If you have taken the tours to Jerusalem last year, you have seen Tamar. The, she was one of the guides, the volunteer guides. She's a Wikipedian. She's really great. She writes chil children's book. And, what we did in Israel, we had her go give an online class to sixth graders. Um, it was done through uh, infrastructure of the uh, Ministry of Education, where they supposed to give, uh, if there is some kind of pandemic or something, you want the children to stay home. They have infrastructure where the teacher sits in one room and broadcast the lessons to classes, to the ch children's home or to classes at school. Now, can you guess how many students attended the lesson? Can be somebody throw up numbers? Somebody? Nice. Somebody? No, that's too, too high. Too high. Actually, we had 13,600 students attending the online lesson. It's over 9,000. What? It's, it's, it's quite a lot. It was done. The students were in computer classes. She was sitting at home broadcasting a lesson to sixth graders. It's basically almost all the sixth graders in the country. And you do it in one lesson. It's a really cool way because you don't have to go from one class to another and you teach all of them about Wikipedia together. It is a successful project. They want to do it again this year for also other, other grades, seventh, eighth, ninth grades. Uh, the, lesson won't plan, the lesson plan was aimed at these students. We didn't teach them how to edit Wikipedia, but rather how to read it, how to search it, and how to edit talk pages if they have questions. We weren't sure that all sixth graders are the right target audience to edit most of the articles. Just a guess, can you guess the budget? This is, yeah, it is a simple question considering the topic of this uh, lecture. It didn't cost Wikimedia Israel anything. The infrastructure was there. You just need to meet a partner who has the infrastructure and convince him to do it. And again, they want to do it this year. They approached us. So this is a cool project and okay. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I can check. We can, I can check that later. Um, another project that's done with government is lobbying. This is, a, this is done in uh, several countries. It was done this year in Russia, in France, Italy, and Israel. I'm going to talk about uh, the Russian project. I'll just mention that in France and Italy there is an issue of freedom of panorama. You're not allowed to take pictures of buildings and statues. Uh, unless they're really old, and France and Italy tried to do something about it. In Israel, they, uh, we tried to do something like they, they have in the United States, where all the government-made pictures and documents are public domain. In Israel, it's all crown copyright, something that was left, left from the time that King George was still ruling the country, and they still have it now. In Russia, there's both no freedom of panorama, and there is problem to use uh, free licenses. 
And uh, Wikimedia Russia worked and lobbied to change that and had some successes. There is a presentation about it today at uh, 3.40 at room 308. And there's another presentation on this subject at Saturday at 10.30 in room 302. And we invite you to hear uh, both topics. Um, another cheap and interesting and fun way to do outreach and bring audience, audience to Wikimedia uh, projects is doing exhibitions. Uh, we think the coolest one done this year was done by Wikimedia Poland. It's part of the 10 year anniversary. They took, took 16 pictures from the picture of the year competitions, choose the best pictures produced actually by the Wikimedia movement and uploaded to comments, uh, printed them on large pieces of paper and did a mobile exhibition which was so popular it presented in seven cities. It, the audience is the general public, the, the exhibition was done in galleries, convinced art galleries to show this exhibition and people who came to the gallery saw wonderful pictures, wanted to know where these pictures are from and found out that these are free pictures that are appearing in Wikimedia Commons. It is very easy to organize, you just need to print large pictures it, you, and you need to convince an art gallery to present in there for a couple of days, couple of weeks. And it is a really cool outreach in low budget and it wakes up local communities. People come to the gallery, see what the community movement is doing and wants to join in, be part of it. So it's a great project. Um, is there after? Yeah, because sometimes it's not as easy to access uh, Wikipedia as we would like it to be. Um, so what happens is um, that Wikimedia India, at least, tried to tackle that problem by uh, by uh, setting up a platform, Life Search, uh, Life of Wikimedia .in, um, and they try to combine the different languages of India into that single platform, into a single search platform, and um, integrate that. Um, with Narayam, as I understand, that was a that's a method to um, to write the characters that are not Latin. Is that correct? I see someone nodding that knows what I'm talking about. Um, so I think that's really an interesting approach of uh, fixing it. It's not just outreach; it's also uh, trying to offer people real solutions to real problems because they want to find the information, but might might not always know how to type these characters on the computer they are having. Um, a very big chunk of Wikimedia chapter projects goes into uh, cultural heritage projects, collaborations with galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Um, and we are just going to, to give a very small selection of that. Just a very small selection that has been given to us uh, by the different uh, chapters. Just one comment. GLAM is really important to the Wikimedia movement and chapters. We see that by the how many uh, lectures were submitted relating to GLAM related issues to this conference. There were over 100 lectures about GLAM submitted, more than 30 accepted. There is almost several tracks of GLAM every day. And uh, one of the one of these projects um, which you may or may not have heard about is the Wikipedia in residence in a National Museum of Denmark. Um, that, uh, that Wikipedia residence tried to uh, to get the museum staff to write articles, and uh, more than 200 articles have been written. Uh, you can definitely find more information about that in this way too long link, which will be available in the presentation, um, in the presentation slides. And um, it's uh, it's a it's a, a common method to try to do outreach uh, through the institutions by putting a Wikipedia inside their institution as some kind of an ambassador. We have heard several of these uh, over the years, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, there is more on that in different presentations in this weekend. Another one was coming from France, a partnership with Musée de Cluny, and um, it's themed around the Middle Ages. Um, museum staff from all levels was, enc was encouraged to participate in it in workshops. Uh, two workshops uh, were uh, we're getting more than 26 people involved, all the way from uh, people who, um, 
all the way from people who were, uh, were cashier to the director, and um, I think that's really an interesting approach. Do not just focus on the people who are uh, curators, who are really the top experts, but it might also be interesting to just uh, try to tackle those people who do work in a museum, who do work in an institution, but who might actually not have a job that is directly involved with the content. They are probably still interested in the topic. Okay, th this project was done by the, uh, in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. Um, it is uh, quite unique. The approach was, uh, first of all, this is done by many uh, Wikipedia in residence projects. You, have, uh, you, con you convince the museum that it is important for the museum to have many articles written about it. Uh, in this case, the articles were written in Hebrew, of course, but also in English to have them translated. And then you show to the museum that the articles about the museum and its exhibit appearing in many languages. Articles were translated to Swahili, which really excited the museum. Um, and the artists, yeah. Uh, there were dozens of images uploaded from the archive files of the museum. A nice thing to do is a behind the scene tour in the conservation labs. The museum did it to Wikipedians who wanted, were not part of the project, but came from Wikipedia to enjoy the tour. And this is, ensures a good collaboration between the museum and the Wikipedian community. Um, we have several tips given to us. Um, you need to prepare the museum for what, uh, what the uh, Wikipedia resident called the culture shock. They are not used to working with the online community. They are not used to having their contribution deleted. They are not used to sometimes having rude comments in their talk pages. Uh, it happens. Uh, we are not a very polite community. And you need to prepare the museum staff not to be ins insulted by that. It is good to have them write on open users and write in their talk pages. We are working in the museum. We are part of this program. It helps that the Wikipedians are nicer to them. And it is good to prepare in Wikipedia an online page describing the project, again, to have a better relationship with the community. What is really nice about this project was that the museum itself approached artists who are alive today and convinced them to waive copyrights of some of their artwork on low resolution. This is a picture called The Last Supper by Adi Ness. He's a young guy. This picture should be copyrighted for another more than 100 years. But he, will, he allowed to upload it to Wikipedia as free contents and articles were written about the, the picture. And it's a wonderful thing to do because we are allowing the public to view uh, the contents. This picture was actually sold in an auction in New York for tens of thousands of dollars. It won, it's the most expensive picture ever sold by an Israeli artist. And now it is free contents in Wikipedia because of this project. Um, another project was done in Netherlands by the Taylor... No. How do I say that? Taylor. Uh, this is the Taylor Channel. This is the oldest museum in museum. It is not as a museum. It is also uh, an... Uh, cultural association, they did an editing contest which took about six months between January and the 3rd June this year. Uh, it is in Harlem. Um, I was asked to make sure that you know that Harlem, is, this is the original Harlem and not the one in New York. And the result is a humongous number of articles, 600 articles written in museum related subjects. This is artists, curators, objects, uh, cultural uh, references. 13 languages, we listed the languages because there are so many of them and so many articles written in these languages. And um, there was a cool prize. I don't, so if you didn't, don't know if you've seen the previous pictures, the prize given. And Ludovic will explain the tip. The Guardian of the Cultural and Army. Well, and at the very last day of the contest, um, there, there was an edit uh, on, the, uh, on the page where all the declarations were being made of which articles had been submitted had been written. And suddenly there were a few Catalan people coming in and they were dumping their, like, well, you see it, like over a hundred articles in the Catalan Wikipedia they had been preparing in the months before. And suddenly, so they, they summarized that in here's the Catalan army. And um, I think it's really awesome because uh, right now, I think uh, the, 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 the painters who, and the, the scientists who are connected with Tyler Museum, are now uh, really well represented in the Catalan Wikipedia as well. Um, so one of the other projects, um, because 
collaborations with cultural institutions are not happening just like that. You need some preparation for that, and you need some um, you need some process to get them on board. And one of the ways to do that is by a Glam Wiki conference. And they, they organized one last year in uh, Santiago, in Chile. And uh, it was a very successful way of involving new museums into the Wiki world. Um, they organized that, they uh, invited museums from the whole of the country, and they actually had some really, really nice results. Uh, contacts with the National Council of Museums, working together for Wiki Los Monuments 2012 with several organizations, uh, working with uh, new agreements with the National Center of Photographic Heritage and the Salvador Allende Foundation Museum of Solidarity. Doesn't say much to me, but in Chile they are really important museums, right? Um, so it's not this kind, it's what's really important to realize by this kind of a conference, that this conference, such a conference is not the goal. The conference is just the beginning of a journey where you can collaborate with lots of museums, archives, libraries, and galleries. Um, but because they will get to know you and they will start to understand what it means to collaborate with Wikipedia. And uh, this way you can actually uh, explain that to them and make sure that they uh, stay in touch. So you need to make sure there is a follow-up, you need to make sure that things keep moving after that point. Um, as a tip, the, the Chilean uh, the chapter said that it's very helpful to do a real campaign to invite these institutions to your conference. Uh, for example, uh, by posters, social networking, um, to make sure that they are actually coming and that it's not just a conference where there are a few speakers because without an audience, what's interesting is that. Okay, another project was done. When we are thinking about Glam, we usually think of museum, archeon, uh, archives, uh, galleries, mostly artwork. The Australia, uh, Wikimedia Australia, did something quite unique. They went to sports movement. The Paralympic uh, uh, movement, Paralympic, Paralympic Committee in Australia and their idea was to convince the athletes to write articles about themselves, which is something usually not acceptable in Wikipedia. But the idea was that they are the best people who can write about their sports, their participation. It's giving this community a voice in Wikipedia, and they were writing about the history of the Paralympic Games in Australia. And the, I think the point of this project is when you're doing GLAM, you can reach communities. Be open-minded. Think about stuff that is not just in museums. There's many types of glam that can be done. Um, and they also wanted to get people involved in it and the other project, Wikimedians to the Games, that's an interesting project. They did an editing contest with a really cool prize. The prize of which is that the, the editors get, get press access to the Paralympic Games in London. And they fly there and they are obliged, they are the winners, are obliged to write articles about the games for Wikinews and Wikipedia. So it's a nice price and a, a nice idea. Okay, now we listed almost all of the projects that we thought were cool. There was one project we didn't mention and I want you to guess which is the coolest project done by the Wikimedia movement this year as uh, chosen by all the chapters who participated in the survey. Do you have any ideas? No, Mikolas Manuel, who mentioned already. Yeah, Shani was correct. This is the coolest project done by the Wikimedia movement this year, one was failure. It was almost unanimously decided. So if you disagree, you either didn't vote or you should have proposed something even cooler. Um, so Momentpedia is uh, one of the first attempts to embrace a whole town, to make sure that a whole town is involved in um, that uh, if you walk around that town, that you cannot avoid that weird grayish globe which has a part of it missing around the North Pole. Um, it's a, it's a, it's Monmouth is a town in Wales, um, and it's, uh, they try to uh, get every notable place in that town a specific article and put a QR code next to that place. That means if you walk around with your phone and you scan that QR code, which is uh, a square 
um, the square uh, picture basically, which you can scan and go to a URL, you can actually go to the Wikipedia article about that in the language settings of your phone, if it exists, of course. But that's why it's really important to write these articles, translate them in as many languages as possible, and then put uh, the stickers or uh, the, the, the labels up there. Um, at the same time, uh, there is also a, a Wi-Fi project going on, which is helpful if you want to browse to a page, of course. Um, and it's being funded jointly by the Monmouthshire County uh, Council and Wikimedia UK. Um, they are still working on the Wi-Fi, so uh, maybe you cannot access everything yet, um, but it's definitely a, a very bright future. Uh, more than a thousand QR codes, QR PDA codes have been, uh, have been spread around the town, um, which can sometimes be, I'm not sure if you can see that, there is a little QR code over here. Um, with a Wikipedia logo behind it so that people know they are going to Wikipedia uh, when they uh, scan it. They can be ceramic plates, metal plates, depending on whether it's inside or outside. And um, they can be sometimes labels for buildings, uh, sometimes for objects in museums. Um, so it goes all over the place. Sometimes uh, they just have a glass sticker to put on a window. Um, They're really flexible and uh, try to do it in as many ways as possible. This is another one in use, um, with a little tie rip, I think, uh, on a pole. Oh. Uh, two comments. Yeah. <laughs> we wish to, oh, uh, actually three comments. I'll go back for the codes. These codes appear also in shops. You're going to a grocery shop, store, you will see the codes there, and you have an article about the stuff you're buying. So it's all over the town. Um, one thing to mention, I was speaking to people in the Wikimedia UK, uh, during this conference, and they told me that the person who thought about this project wasn't even a Wikipedian. He just came to one of the lectures and got excited. So when you're doing outreach, somebody comes to the chapter and saying, "This, I have a really cool idea. Don't tell him we need to think about it, we don't have a budget, not this year. You might tell him, go for it. Find partners yourself, try and do it. He found the collaboration with the council, which was then putting it Wi-Fi and wanted to do something with it. So be bold in allowing people to do cool ideas. And two notices. First of all, I wish to remind you that not, the, the official food of Wikimania is Turkwaffles. Now, there are some Dutch people here walking around with Turkwaffles. Try and capture them in a dark corner, beat them out, and take it from them. <laughs> and if you're already addicted, we have the, uh, um, National, the International Association of Turkwaffle Addicts you can join. I joined last year. Find it on Meta, ASA. Okay, and we want, this is an inspirational lecture. We want to have you inspired. Uh, this is a quote I actually heard for the first time this week when I came to the US. Eleanor Roosevelt said that nothing has ever been achieved by the, per the person who says this cannot be done. So if you want to do something, it can be achieved. So first of all, we would like to thank the whole bunch of people who filled out a form like this. We have more than 30 chapters participating in the survey who submitted their coolest projects and told what project of another chapter they thought was really awesome. Um, I'm not gonna read all these names uh, because nobody is really uh, waiting for that and just uh, the people on the wiki bus who helped us with figure out all the details, very thank you as well. Um, then there are of course the obligate, obligatory Wikipedia credits, and then there is some time for questions, and I think that Tim would uh, be happy to give you the microphone if you have, if you raise your hand. Yeah, we have five minutes for questions, uh, but do wait until the microphone reaches you, so it is also heard on the video. Please state your name and then your question. Hi, I'm Stereno from the Romanian Wikipedia. When I first found out about Mount Mousepedia from uh, the materials in the, um, they gave me, uh, I was wondering if anybody thought of doing that uh, for Wikilabs monuments. So for the monuments in a certain area, city or country or whatever. That is something that uh, the local uh, teams can definitely consider, yes. Yeah, but I was wondering if you know anything about that. So far, I, I haven't heard countries that were. Uh, I think the UK was considering it, but I'm not sure if they're uh, still joining. But um, in other countries, they have been thinking about it. But sometimes it's a really old building, and they don't always appreciate it if you make holes in it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
it is a cool idea that should be considered by the chapters that are doing the competition. Okay, any other questions from behind you? Uh, hello to everyone. My name is Vasilka Dimitrovska. I'm one of the founders of Wikimedia Macedonia from the Republic of Macedonia. Um, I'm very personally engaged with this because I'm a professional archaeologist. So uh, we haven't been started uh, the Hila Monuments project and Glam project yet in Macedonia. I'm planning to. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, is it possible to find um, your presentation online? and somehow to translate it in Macedonian, because uh, Wikipedia in Macedonian language is the most read uh, website in Macedonia. It's number one ranked. So this really means a lot to everyone engaged with okay. Wikipedia in Macedonia. First of all, some hands to the Wikipedia in Macedonia. This presentation will be online. We're going to give it to the, on the conference website, and it's CC BY, so translate it as if you want. I don't know Macedonian. I can't do it myself. And we invite you to the Wikilove Monument Lecture tomorrow, which will have a different presentation and a panel. So, yeah. Okay, another question? Hi, my name is Peter Brosh, and I'm from Czech uh, Wiki Chapter. And I would like to ask you, what do you think is the best way how to share the, the issues between the chapters? Because in Czech chapter, we have several really good issues like a memory game. We are now making a professional PR advertisement about the protected areas and so. But it's really hard to give this information to other chapters, not here because we can see the faces now, but you know, when we are back home, what is the best way how to do it? So. Within the Wikimedia movement, there is a system where chapters uh, have to support every year an annual report. Of course, that is very boring to read because exactly. there are big reports. So what I always try to recommend to people is like, please send a short summary of what you are doing. Like in every activity, only like two lines. Two lines, just summarize what are you doing and send that every two or three months. Send that to the uh, reports mailing list. Uh, the, I'm not sure what mailing list we're currently Announce. using. Announce. Yeah, this is the announcements my, mailing list. So this every chapter should send their short report. That's just, it should be this long. Just what projects are you really working on to the announcements mailing list and people will most likely read it. This is my, sorry, this is my second comment because for example, half a year I was trying to get access to the mailing list of the chapters and it's almost impossible for newcomers to get the access and therefore it's really hard to share the, you know, the information with the chapters. Well, the chapters mailing list is a closed mailing list. The announcements mailing list is open for everyone to read. I see. So that's right. a much better place to send your, uh, your, your reports to because otherwise you end up in a situation that is only a small group of people. There is nothing secret in it, so share it with everyone, please. Okay, another comment. When you're sending this short report, have there a link to your project page in which you put lots of pictures, put the outcome results that we know that the, the project was successful, give good tips to other chapters to do it, or good tips to yourself to do it next time, and have it in English to make it easier for people to read. Google Translate is nice, but it's sometimes really funny. Yeah, yeah I will just, uh, we are trying to make every report on Meta, but you know, it's, if you put the report on Meta in English, nobody will read it because nobody knows about it. So. It, need some place where you will highlight, you know, the... You need a combination. You need to send the information to the chapters. We did this really cool project. We have 13,000 students li li listening to a lesson. This is the link to this page. Uh, I was in charge of that project. I didn't do that. <laughs> so you, you need to do that and have it in English. And then other chapters can learn from this. The idea is to share the, the cool information, the cool project, and have it done in many other countries because these are really nice projects that can be done usually in low budget or and can have great impact in, on the movement in your country. If, okay, by, by the way, if you want to help improve that knowledge sharing mechanism, please find Asaf or find Richard. Richard, is he here? No, Richard is probably not in the room. Oh, yeah, Richard, from New, Richard over there from New York. I'm sorry. Uh, they are working on a system to make it easier to get this knowledge to the people. If you want to help them, please find them and give them a hand. Okay, oh, another thing, GLAM projects. Uh, are published in the, there's a newsletter, This Month in Glam, which is in English, and it's by areas, and it's really interesting to read. So you can get people to subscribe to that and read it, and you can publish there as well. 
I think we have time for one more question. Is that the question? Oh, okay. Just wait for the mic. Uh, it's an answer, actually. I just wanted to make sure everybody in the room knows that if you were looking at all these cool activities and feel, well, yes, but we don't have the money for that kind of thing, that is your easiest problem because all you need to do is send me an email. Okay? I run the Wikimedia Grants program and we're happy to support cool projects like this if your chapter needs funds but has the rest of what it takes, has the people, has the time, has the opportunity, write to us and we can work on getting you funding. Thanks. We need funding for the two couples that it has to be. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we are still on time. If there is last questions, and if not, lunch, I think, awaits us. No? Thank, Thank you. you.